accomplish, and it is an ambitious move. This puts the U.S. right in the top tier of ambition in terms of its uh, 2030 target. And to get there, it's going to require a whole of government approach. There are three sectors where we see immediate action is going to be necessary and possible. The first is cleaning up the power sector. That means investing in a cleaner grid. It also means policies like a clean electricity standard. Secondary is transport, electrifying vehicle fleets, cars and trucks. That means investing in electrical vehicle infrastructure, electrification, domestic supply chains. It also means putting tailpipe standards on those vehicles to get them to zero emissions. And then the third area is methane from oil and gas. Methane is one of the fastest acting uh, climate pollutants we have, and limiting it from oil and gas production is an immediate step that we can take to reduce warming. Let me move on uh, to China's goals. Uh, President Xi Jinping repeating past commitments that China would strive to peak carbon emissions by 2030 and uh, carbon neutrality by 2060. I mean, I may not be around to see the 2060 thing. I may be dead by that point. But did you hear any new pledges from China? So I heard steps in the right direction, but I think there's opportunity to go further. So I heard President Xi say uh, strictly controlling new coal-fired power plants and talk about phasing down the use of coal in the 15th five-year plan, not this one, but the next one. He also talked about promoting a green belt and road initiative, which is going to be critical. I think there's room to go further and stating very clearly that China will stop financing coal-fired power plants throughout that belt and road. That would be the next step. We're starting to hear things towards that direction. A green BRI is a step in that direction, but I think there's further to go. The other, th the other place we'd like to see is a emissions reduction commitment on, let's say, the 2035 timeframe. That would be after the peak that's been pledged to happen by 2030. It would put China on a path to that 2060 target, and it would fit with the beautiful China initiative that President Xi has already put in place. Nat, oh, there's so many promises, pledges, and commitments, but can all of this unravel again, especially in the United States, when there's a new president in office. I mean, we saw what happened when Donald Trump became president. Well, it's going to be for exactly that reason. There are really two things the Biden administration needs to do. The first is demonstrate ambition. And I think it did that today. It demonstrated that, it, that the administration and President Biden are serious about attacking climate change and supporting a global effort. Now, the second thing, they've got to follow through, and they've got to follow through in a way that changes the facts on the ground in the U.S. to make it much harder to, reserve, to reverse. That means investments in a clean energy infrastructure and a cleaner grid that won't be easy to reverse later on. It means legislation that puts enforceable limits on pollution that can't be reversed by a court. So there are things that we need to see this administration doing in the follow-up to achieve this new ambitious target and need to think about how to do that in a way that can't, as you say, simply be turned back by the next administration. And that follow-up would happen when? COP26? Well, we need to see, it needs to be a whole of government approach. It needs to start this summer when Congress will be considering an investment package. That needs to be uh, centrally engaged on low carbon investment, clean energy investment. Uh, and then it will continue not only through COP26, but here at home in the U.S., in terms of the actions the administration takes under existing authority. But President Biden and the White House can't let Congress off the hook. Congress also needs to do more. There's a lot the White House can do on its own, but it needs Capitol Hill as well here.